Namaste, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. If I look around, I think we should have asked the students to catch and chase some people from the street of Copenhagen <laughs> this morning, but uh, nevertheless. So I changed a little bit, and uh, because I think we have to consider that soil health is mainly combined by human health as well. And uh, I want to contribute and to tell you what, how conservation agriculture can contribute to make the soil as a sink for CO2. So when I show you my structure, I brought with me uh, this little poster from the soil of the year from Germany. So every year we uh, elect one soil type as the soil uh, of the year, which is done today in, uh, in Berlin. And uh, each county uh, has is, uh, the chair, is the chairman then for one year. So in this were the pseudo clay, we call it in Germany, the uh, soils who store lots of water and are wet and dry within the year. Oh, that was too fast. So let us uh, have a look on the soil on the carbon side. And uh, this is one uh, from the Global Carbon Project, the CO2 emissions in historical perspective. And if you look on that, you can see that there is happening something in some parts. Look on China and other countries. The US is here and we are here. So it's a little bit... Um, not going too fast at that side, but if you look deeper in, in the countries, you can uh, consider some differences within that. But in Asia, <coughs> there is a lot of uh, movement on the CO2, and uh, if you, uh, we all have to be, uh, yeah, very curious what is happening in Paris on terms of CO2 this time. So, and if you go uh, further, estimated annual global respiration, then uh, the people, uh, Bond Lamberti and Thompson, they put out that soil respiration has increased a lot. And that is one, uh, there was another uh, investigation, the Soil uh, Carbon Europe project, where 14 countries, 15 years annual reports, uh, they, can, they showed that not only temperature of atmosphere has changed, but the soil temperature as well. So that soil respiration is increasing and that is not so good. So another investigation from my country, from our colleagues in Bonn, they put out this figure. What can we learn from this side? So if you look here, from the latest 79s, uh, 79, it started here. We have an increase in soil organic matter in the topsoil of our country NRW. But why? Did the farmers did very well? Did they put all the straw inside? Oh, Mr. Uh, Peltrel told us. No, I must say to you, <coughs> this is an effect of um, the changement in land use. So lots of green of grasslands have been put into arable land and that's why uh, we had an increase in soil organic carbon. So if you have really uh, over long periods grasslands, which are a huge amount of organic carbon, which is more than 10%, uh, and you um, turn around with our plows, then you can increase organic carbon. But this is uh, done after a period of time. Uh, the first members are coming from the stream. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, then it goes down um, afterwards uh, if, you, um, if you increase oxidizing processes in the soil. That's for sure. So that uh, the soil organic carbon is going down if we uh, go on like that. Oh. Something is happening. So <clears throat> let us look uh, to the point of soil health because uh, this is uh, as what I believe in is very uh, a crucial point for us to survive on the soil. 
And there are two uh, phrases from one from uh, Mr. Roosevelt who told very early the nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. And uh, what we can learn from South Africa is take care of the land and the land will take care of you. That's, um, <coughs> I think, a main topic. And what is our aim? What should we uh, consider? So we have some uh, critical points, for some criteria to achieve, which is a crumply structure, first of all, in the, in the soil and not too, um, uh, not too high bulk density, low to medium, only 1.4 to 1.6 gram per um, centimeter in cubic, and a live obstruction by the earthworm, which is one we were already taught about, uh, this little animal, as a result of high earthworm abundance, more than 100 individuals per square meter. We must have a turnover, of the organic matter and nutrient release is, is always in a balance, has to be in a balance. We can't only increase uh, tremendous and we can't only uh, abuse the, the carbon. And of course we need gas flow, water exchange without uh, restraint. So what we have to have is pores that are continuously from the subsoil, to, uh, from the um, topsoil to the subsoil, and this very deep. And this is a major point because if you have a look on the machinery parts of the farmers today, that is to say, a soil which is <coughs> uh, very rich in continuous pores also can bear much more load than a soil who, who isn't um, built up like this. So, and uh, <coughs> one day um, in my life I decided, so it's not only to investigate uh, in laboratories, so when you, um, are over a long period of time, a soil scientist, you can um, be a sensitive person uh, with the soil, and so we did this, which is a um, classification key, and uh, now I'm a little bit proud because the, our uh, government decided to do this in English in some weeks, so you can be not only use it in German. And with uh, this field diagnosis, you can easily go to the soil. So each farmer should do, uh, should do this, not only in soil laboratories. Use a spade, use a knife and use something to measure with so you can start with your field inspection. What about the soil surface? You can uh, have lots of answers if you look on the soil surface. Uh, what is with erosion maybe? The penetration resistance of the soil, if you go with a stick, uh, how resistant is the soil? And then you have to do some little digging only, field diagnosis, the evaluate, evaluation with a spade, look on the roots, R look on your plant roots, they are um, very good indicators for what is going on in your soil. And then the transitions between soil layers, the decomposition state and soil color. So if a soil is very compacted, very easily you can see after some years only what water um, is a painter into your soil. The second thing is, in the field diagnosis, you make a little shatter test. You put the spade and let drop down your soil. And let's <coughs> then have, have a look on the structure and have a look on the consolidation states of your soil aggregates. This is what the soil aggregating should your earthworms do when the soil is good in, as well in a good chemical state. And then you have a look on your little uh, pit wall and measure with a knife the bulk density and the coarse pore content can be evaluated very easily. And you have always three examples within this uh, classification key, a bad, a, the, the best and the middle one. And afterwards you come to a, a conclusion and um, uh <coughs> we have some factors to consider root growth is very high, uh, soil structure is very high, and coarse pore content is very objective. So 
If you were a good um, pupil, then you have good results, and after that is uh, in the green line, so 52 points, this uh, should be a good, um, a good uh, result. So harmful soil compaction in the field <coughs> and all these parameters are as well as I think uh, good indicators for healthy soils as well. How can you achieve? How can you go on? So I put down for you 13 steps now what you can do, what farmers can do, what land users should do. There are lots of reduces you can see uh, <coughs> and here I put down an example for a good structured soil in every year in the month of May I go with my students um, in the field for uh, half a week and then we Yes, we dig deep into the soil and uh, <coughs> then we investigate about all parameters soil can show you. Reduce soil contact area pressure, which is very important. Reduce the wheel load. So we often think um, it is only during the harvest in the late autumn times, but is not. I don't know exactly about the Danish climate, but I think it's very similar to our um, German climate, so we have much more wet wheat harvest times than uh, sugar beet harvest. So reduce wheel slip and the number of passes of all. So, and you can easily do that if you use CTF controlled traffic farming. This is what um, our colleagues in Australia um, support a lot. They say uh, you can't uh, work uh, as a conservation agriculture farmer if you don't use CTF. So always roll through the same uh, tracks. Cultivation of soil, of dry soil only, which is um, coming up more and more because we have uh, uh, less farmers doing their harvest and more and more um, Yes, um, how do they call them? Harvester um, by, by enterprise. And they don't look on the soil, they look on their time schedules and they have to roll for 25, 24 hours a day and so on. But we have to cultivate on dry soils. Adjustment of soil cultivation implements, of course, and re retention of crop you seed shoes on the side. Only harvest the corn not the straw. Leave the straw on the field, please. And cultivation of cover crops. Cover crops who um, uh, have lots of benefits. Crop rotation from a perspective of phytopathology and soil improvement. If you only have two crops, this is too little. So this will increase your, um, <coughs> all your, your pests, maybe. And uh, if you have more uh, uh, plants, more cultivars, from four to eight cultivars you can go on, then it's much more better. Choose organic uh, uh, cover um, over mineral fertilizers and guarantee optimum pH value of the soil. This is very important as well. You can't um, drive a sandy soil in very high in pH value and you must have a, a a higher pH if you have a clay soil. So, and reduce cultivation intensity. This is what we should do. This is not what we should do. So, I don't know, this uh, crop rotation may have the aim to raise up ducks in the winter time. I don't know. But this is not what we can do. So, this should be a grassland, of course, because it's near a little river, near a little river here. This is no land to grow maize or corn. This is what we want. Um, so many pores are even on the surface. So you can look, there are lots of earthworms plowing and doing all the best. One glimpse for uh, conservation agriculture. How can it help? And uh, <coughs> does it um, increase the living soils? And there's one um, what we have to consider that sustainable agriculture is not simple and simple agriculture is not sustainable. So if you only use Roundup Ready plants and only have a two crop rotation, this is very simple. You can plant then on one sheet, but it is not sustainable. 
So, after all, um, last year in um, Win uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, the climate smart farming and focus on soil health. This was a main topic and this is, was considered as very important. So David Montgomery, he said, rebuilding soil is crucial for the future of civilization. And um, I like this um, uh, phrase from Dwayne Beck who said, if tillage was good for eliminating weeds, they'd all be gone by now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> so, um, diversified uh, cropping systems, I don't uh, want to put all these uh, things, it's very much uh, done by a friend of mine from South Africa, but uh, <coughs> it is uh, worth to consider so that you, uh, you must compare the long-term costs and benefits of diverse cropping system with the costs and benefits of controlling pests and so on. This is very important. If you only look on one crop, you may be got different uh, results. But if you, uh, if you compare the whole crop rotation, so after five or six uh, <coughs> rotations, only then you can uh, compare the system. So we should compare systems and not only the, the different crops only. So, and um, <coughs> a, a main thing with, which was already mentioned this morning is that if you increase your soil carbon, you can easily store water. You can better store water into the soil. And this is becoming a crucial thing, uh, not only in Northern Europe, but worldwide. And if we see that weather is changing by now, so that we have more showers, not the, what we are, were used to, to have a slow motion rain maybe, but we do have more showers, so coming much water at one time only, and then you have to have open pores in the soil and the soil with uh, a huge amount of soil organic carbon to store this water. Only one, uh, two slides from our results of our research farm. We do research on 100 hectare farm, which is a no-till farm since 20 years by now. And when we started, look on these um, uh, soil organic matter, it was only little. It was beneath uh, two percentages. And after now 20 years, we investigated that it is coming much more better. And, but we have to, of course, to remember you can't um, grow up very fast with a um, soil organic matter. But if you overdo, if you put, if you leave all your residuals, you leave the straw and put a compost on top, you can uh, increase that a little bit faster. And the second is uh, that earthworm is coming up as well. So this field, we, we couldn't believe because uh, my student, she said, oh, I can't believe that I have to go uh, different times because we had more than 900 individuals on that. So we did it uh, in, in different uh, parts of the year, but it was always the same. So this is a result of very huge straw amounts. I must say, we earned there 11 to 12 tons of wheat, and then you have huge uh, residuals. So the straw, even you have eight tons of residuals. And the earthworm would say, let me be your plow. So let me <laughs> plow your soil. Um, we had a, a nice example already this morning. So conclusion is, Soils should be a sink, not a source for CO2. Dramatically increase we have of CO2 during the last decades as a result of uh, um, oxidizing processes due to land use. Uh, this is a very big point. Soil health provides high yields of crops. Future weather extremes put it as a main topic of sustainable agriculture to avoid erosion and other soil degradation. Improve our efforts to achieve crumply structure, continuity of pores into deeper layers, balance pH value due to soil texture and optimize soil organic matter. And finally, create climate resilient systems, increase adoption of 
conservation agriculture through innovation, knowledge sharing, and faster implementation, and then increase economy, your yields and ecology by reduced intensity, like as in a CA system. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. <clears throat>